good uh, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, and welcome to week two of the B3 Lockdown Club. I'm joined by our programme leader and, and head coach, Eddie Burke. How are you, Eddie? I'm, I'm good, Blavis, thank you. I'm good. Uh, ready to pink, get going In the again. pink, I see. In <laughs> hiding away from homeschooling in my daughter's bedroom. Brilliant. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Yeah. And everything all right? Yeah, really good. Really looking forward to um, having a look at what people have sent in from week one yeah. uh, and also sharing what we're going to be doing um, in the future weeks. So, yeah, really good. OK, so um, this week um, we, we, we're going to go to Brownie in a bit and talk about sort of what we've been doing and the feedback we've had through, through the Facebook group and, and, and emails. Um, if you are um, sending stuff in, the Facebook group is a great way to do it. But um, I also understand that not everybody um you use use a social media um so email um team b3 at b3 cricket.com and uh, we'll, we'll deal with that and pick those up we'll shoot over to um andy but before that i did an interview this week with our, our spin lead coach peter such um let's have a look at what he had to say hello peter how are you hello all good mate and yourself yeah not bad at all thanks yeah good cool. um good stuff you you um you moved to Essex, presumably. Um, was that your final county as a player? It, it was, yes. I started off at Nottinghamshire. I did sort of five years there, and then opportunities got squeezed, so I moved on to Leicestershire. Um, worked out okay for one season, but then again got squeezed a little bit, so ended up moving down to Essex, and uh, things built gradually th from there, and I had 12 very good seasons. You did. You, you're a, a spin legend. Um, I know you wouldn't say that, but I can. Over 500 first-class matches and um, 11 test matches. Um, what's your most memorable moment from your, your test career? Um, I think sort of um, a couple of them, really. Sort of, I got six wickets on my debut against Australia at Old Trafford in 1993. So, you know, that was a wonderful moment. Um, and um, yeah, something I'll never forget there. So that, that was absolutely brilliant. And then sort of the other, the other one that's really memorable, we played a test match at the Sydney Cricket Ground, you know, 45,000 people in there and I managed to pick up five for as well. So, you know, brilliant atmosphere and uh, yeah, sort of Ashes cricket. I've, it's, it's been a privilege to actually sort of play in a couple of series and, and have a little bit of success. So I've loved it. Yeah, what, what year was the uh, five for in Sydney? Um, that was 98-99 on that tour over there. So it's the same match that Darren Goff got a hat-trick in that test match. Brilliant, brilliant memories. And, and that would then be a, a real cauldron of um, Aussie, um, Aussie passion, wouldn't it? It was a very noisy sort of place, yeah, absolutely. A sort of full house for all four days of the test match. It was a test match that ebbed and flowed a little bit. There were times in the match when we had an opportunity, but they managed to sort of wriggle out of it and... Uh, and said as a few too many in the final innings. So yeah, it was a it was a, a great experience, and uh, yeah, it's a very a very noisy, raucous, passionate sort of place to play your cricket. And um, obviously, unprecedented times for for cricket clubs and club cricketers. Mm. Um, a, a big thank you for offering to help us with this lockdown club. Look, it's, it's vitally important that we all do as much as we can just to keep that passion and enthusiasm going in the game. We've got to keep those cricketing lights burning because it has been a sort of a, a frustrating 12 months where we're all building up to last season and uh, all of a sudden it was, it was put on ice till sort of July or August time and it was very frustrating all round and it's really important that we sort of maintain that sort of interest and passion in the game. We want people to continue to play the game and we want more people to sort of pick up a bat and ball and play the game. It's, it's really important that we sort of keep all our sports going and cricket's my passion, cricket's my game, so I want to do all I can to, to help ensure that it sort of prospers and, and comes back stronger. Yeah, as, as do we all who are involved in this. So, um, yeah, big thank you. And, and um, I suppose if the first few weeks we're, we're talking about the basics in, in regard to, well, everything, but spin bowling is, is, is your forte. Talk through the kind of things we're going to be doing. Um, well, the first thing to sort of think about when it comes to the basics, the basics are what all the great players do, and they do them fantastically well. Their basics are are the best and that sort of helps them to rise to the top of the pile 
Um, you've got to have solid basics to underpin whatever skill that you're trying to deliver on a, on a sports field and the cricket field. And, and cricket is a sort of a, a highly technical game in, to, in some, some respects. So we need to have those basics nailed. So the things that we're going to be talking about and looking at are spinning the ball hard. That's the most important thing that you do as a spin bowler because that gets you to gets the ball to drift and drop in the air and then it moves sideways and bounces off the pitch and that's what you're after that's what you need to do and then once you've got that in your head there and you're really spinning the ball hard you then need to work on your accuracy and you get your accuracy by having that solid repeatable action that solid repeatable action that will deliver a stock ball for you because if you haven't got a, a stock ball in, in most forms of cricket then you're going to be under pressure when you finished playing, you worked as a lead spin coach with the ECB for almost a decade, I think. That's right, yes. Now I was sort of privileged to stay involved in the game and stay involved at that elite level. So that, that was fantastic. You know, I, I love the experience. I, I love working with spin bowlers. For me, coaching was one of those things that got me the buzz that was as close to playing as you could get. Um, because you're in and around the action to a certain extent and you're, you're helping other people to sort of hopefully sort of improve and, uh, and fulfill their potential as cricketers. So, you know, it, it was a, a wonderful time and I'm still heavily involved in coaching now, sort of particularly on the spin bowling side of things. And, and, and if you can share without compromising anything, um, easiest person to coach and, and, and probably the most difficult? Um, I think... The, the, the ones that, that I, I, I found that sort of I got the best out of, the ones that were prepared to work hard and ones that sort of really did want to improve. Um, if you've got those sorts of things going through, through your mind in terms of having that sort of strong work ethic and that desire to improve, then that's an open door for a coach. You don't really have to push it in. You just walk through it and do whatever you can to help. Well, you, you did that without compromising anything because you didn't give me a name. So uh, <laughs> that's perfect. Um, listen, um, I'm, I'm going to get off, let you go. We're, we're going to do a few chats throughout the, the six week program that we've put together. And mm -hmm. um, we're also going to do a, a spin bowling and coaching masterclass. So perfect. Um, we, we, we'll, we'll book that and, and, and we'll have some Q&A and interactive stuff. Hopefully okay. you're up for that. Absolutely. Love to be involved. Do what I can. Okay. Top man. Thanks, Sushi. Take care. Talk to you soon. Cheers then. So um, as enthusiastic as ever, I, I've known him right. From, we grew up together playing cricket um, against each other. Uh, but wow, what a career he's at. Yeah, we're just so lucky to be able to to pull on the on the resource and the experience and the knowledge of, of people like Suchi. You know, it's um, his messages are always clear. Um, it shows how simple um, I think good coaches can break things down and simplify things, and Suchi does that so well. Fitness wise, um, clubs um, something interesting this week actually. Uh, ben Trevor Jones last week, who, who, who's, who's obviously involved, professional physiotherapist at Derbyshire County Cricket Club. Yeah. Um, he, he's our club coach, and he started a, a, a fitness club. And this might be um, might be useful for some club coaches and captains out there. So we'll, we'll connect with him now, if that's all right. Perfect. Sounds great. Okay. Let's see what Ben's up to. Hi, Ben. How are you? Good, brothers. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, we, we've had a really good first week. Some some brilliant um, feedback and positive responses. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of things. Um, what one, the sort of people are saying, you know, um, what what about fitness and and, and helping us um, get fit? Well, um, we, we, we've given the guidance on, um, you know, preparation for a training session, uh, but really physical fitness is is um, well, everybody's so different, and and um, we, we we can't possibly do that. But I thought you might like to share what you've done for our club because. I think that's brilliant. And, and, and other coaches and captains uh, might take some inspiration from that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? Because when you're trying to cater a fitness program for a large group, uh, it's, it, it can be uh, difficult because you've got, you know, people at all different levels of fitness. Um, it's hard to know 
who's in, you know, who's carrying uh, certain injuries that might be restricting them from doing certain things. But then that's all part of why you're doing it as well, because those problems aren't going anywhere. So we're now in February and we're, you know, hopefully going to have a cricket season in, in April or May, optimistically. Mm -hmm. Um, They're just going to bubble away under the surface until they, they start up in April and May. So why don't we address them now? Um, So essentially what I've tried to do is cater for a large group. Um, You're trying to design sessions that can be completed by everyone within the group. And it's just that the way you do the sessions is dependent on what level of fitness you're at. Um, So I'm trying to give people options. Um, And then everyone likes training differently as well. Uh, You know, and, and similar to what we talked about last week with even how we broke the warm down, uh, the warm up, into uh, certain aspects of performance. It's the same with these training programs. So um, you want to add some variety as well. So, you know, you want to do some long running, uh, you want to do some shorter running and you want to do some strength work. It's, it's as simple as that. And if you're getting that done a couple of times a week over the next couple of months, you're going to be in such a better position come April, May than what you would have been if you just went, oh, well, I can't do that because it hurts or, you know, it, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, no, perfect. And just describe what, you, what you've done for us in terms of the tools you've used, like the WhatsApp, the Strava, and, and, and you know, the very basic sort of week one step. But it's get, I mean, the engagement's been brilliant. It's been good so far. We'll see what the engagement's like over the next few weeks when I start throwing training sessions at everyone. Um, I have so far put together um, a WhatsApp group with people who were interested in doing it. So... I didn't want to do it in the main WhatsApp group because I didn't want people, they don't have to do it. It's, you know, it's league cricket. They can make their choice. Um, I just wanted to provide the content for the people to be able to do it. Um, And, you know, as I, well, probably a bit more than I expected actually signed up and everyone was keen. I think as soon as you get a few more people in there, there, you know, it it quickly turns into, oh, I should probably do it. Um, And hopefully we drag, you know, a few people along with us. Um, so set up a WhatsApp group. Uh, obviously, I'm going to provide the content for training sessions per week. Um, luckily, we've got one of the young players as well who's doing a few strength and conditioning um, online um, training modules. So he's going to join me. and It's a good way for him to develop his skills as well. Uh, I've got everyone to sign up to Strava and I've created a, a group, um, Papwick and Limby uh, Cricket Club. So we can all, you know, a bit of banter. And that way, when you're out going for a run, you know that, you know, there's you're getting a little bit of feedback from people and hopefully some, uh, some encouragement, that will be the goal. Um, and ideally I'm going to split the group into two so we can get a bit of competitiveness as well. So, you know, whoever's running the most miles per week will, um, will earn points for their side. And then there'll be some sort of social event put on by the losing team. It's fantastic. So um, it is horses for courses and, and everybody can sort of pick and choose from the guidance. Mm. So, we, we, if for those who are interested, um, if, if they ask through the Facebook group or email, can we share with them uh, what you've created and how we're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. And that could be used for, for, any, um, for any club team. Um, you know, the aim of the game is just to get cricketers fitter and, and performing better. And then also there's the other aspect of fitness, which is, you know, it's good for your health, isn't it? Like, yeah. I think at the moment in England, it's um, it, any, any extra motivation is, is very welcomed. <laughs> um, yeah. So going out for a, for a run can be um, a little bit dull at times, but, you know, hopefully now with the group we've created, it'll feel like people are out running with their cricket team, you know, because everyone's out there doing it um, and it's going towards something uh, and it'll probably the idea for me is it's going to tie your fitness you're doing now, trying to tie it into well, this is actually going to help you with cricket. Like this is why we're doing it. Um, and I'm trying to create sessions that are, that I know will help their performance with cricket as well. Um, but yeah, if you want to share some of our ideas, it's a little bit of a, a work in progress at the moment. Like I'm rather than sort of setting it out over eight weeks from now, I'm more approaching it um, at the moment, as you said, just the testing. So get everyone to go for a 2k run, you know, some of the guys who are fitter, they can have a really red hot crack at it and get a good time. Mm. Um, And then they've got to try and improve on that. But people who haven't done much running, I've said to them, don't go out and um, and injure yourself because that defeats the purpose. Just run 2k's, 
at the best time you can possibly do at this point, and then we'll reassess it in a few weeks. Um, that, that's it. And same as the push-ups. Um, you know, and I'm trying to do things that you can easily do yourself at home. It's not meant to be, you know, have heaps of equipment. So there's no real excuse for any club cricketer not to be able to do it. No, they're all measurable as well, Ben, aren't they? You know, you, you're gaining some, some feedback from, from the people and you, you can look to improve on those, can't you, as you, as you go on? Well, that's exactly right. And I've, I've got everyone's name on an Excel spreadsheet and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to enforce it. Like, if people don't want to do the 2K time or the yeah. push-ups, that's absolutely fine. Um, but what you're trying to do is provide opportunities for players who want to do it. If they don't want to do it, I'm not going to make them do it. And Brothers isn't going to make them do it. We just want to create, give them that opportunity to do it, um, which, yeah, it seems to be, to be working so far. But as I said, uh, let's, let's see how it goes in the next few weeks. Brilliant. Okay, mate. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll tune in next week. And without naming any names, um, uh, you know, just get, you know, get your general feedback from, from that club group. Uh, because that'll be interesting, I'm sure, to a lot of people out there in club cricket world. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what about pro cricket world? How are things going at Derbyshire County Cricket Club? Are everything going along okay? Yeah, yeah. I think everyone's pretty happy. We're just, uh, we've got players um, coming back in from South Africa um, now, obviously doing their quarantining. Uh, we've got one player in Australia. He's, he's coming back um, in the next few weeks. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, through the appropriate pathways, obviously. Um, everything's going, going quite well. Obviously, training's a little bit different at this point to what it would normally be. Um, but, you know, they're, they're ticking the boxes. They're, they're doing their, they're doing their um, conditioning and, and their strength work. And a lot of the times, they're actually just doing it at home because we're trying to limit how much time they're spending at the ground um, just in line with COVID protocols. So, uh, yeah, um, and then now it's just really for them obviously they've been training for longer so they're really transitioning now from they should have a really good fitness base and starting to move more into skills okay brilliant thanks ben i will send you my 2k time this weekend yeah. okay good next week. Uh, why don't why don't we do it over over video and we'll see right. cheers matey cheers ben well done Ta -da. the fitness stuff is, is really good and the way it's catered for all the age groups and, and different dynamics within the club. Um, so I think some other club coaches um, or captains will, will, will find that inspiring, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. And he's, he's prepared to share it for the greater good, isn't he? Um, sharing best practice is one thing that we're, we're trying to achieve in the lockdown club. So the content that he'll be putting together over the next few weeks will be great. And, um, you know, if I was involved in any club, really, I'd be looking to spread that around um, both senior and junior elements of the club. Yeah, perfect. And talking of the greater good, um, let's go over to Derbyshire and talk to um, Brownie. Um, he, he's going to um, talk to us about the, the videos and the drills that we're introducing in week two. And yeah. also um, he, he's going to review a few of the videos that have been sent in by the, um, the, the Facebook group. Uh, good morning, Brownie. How are you? Not too bad, brothers. Nice to see you again. And you, mate. I see the sun shining in Derbyshire. Always shines in Derby, mate. Doesn't shine on the football field, but uh, it's in the sky. Uh, it, it is a lovely day, actually. And um, but the last week hasn't been that good. It's been mixed, to say say the best. And um, a few people were struggling to get outside and, and do their their exercises and drills. Um, but I posted that that video you made at our office. You know, just the you know the, the stuff you can do indoors, even when you can't get outside. That was that was really useful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about body shape and balance, you know, moving from your stance onto that front leg, holding it for a split second, and then being able to get back, you know, takes a little bit of doing, you know, incorporating your core, getting that working. But more importantly, try to keep this, for me, my right side in, rather than hop onto that front leg and come round, can I hold that in? Because what, that's what I'll be doing when I'm playing my shot. So, there's, you know, if you can't hit a ball, you know, or a tennis ball, whatever, just anything. A foam ball you can get now, you know, something like that. So you've, you've just got something to, you know, to visual, um, to give you a cue so you can get your hands through it without damaging anything inside. Yeah, and, and the, uh, the response from your players at Otbrook, where you're the coach and manager, uh, we've had a lot of people signed up, so um, hopefully seeing some enthusiasm there. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, they've all been pretty positive. They all want to get out and, you know, we should be obviously starting our winter nets. 
that's not to be this year, unfortunately. So, you know, they've got a bit of cricket because these people just want to play cricket like they did last summer. So this is giving them something where they can actually work and focus. And like we said last week, these are probably the bits that we miss out. Yeah, yeah, the basics. The important little bits, which are just as crucial. Yeah, just as crucial. The balance. How many youngsters you see come first net of the season, you know, and they're trying to just hit it back wall and tee off and they're not standing still, they've got no base. You know, and you know, I'm a, a big fan of the, the T20 and the big bash and whatever. And you look at the players there, they just get such a good base. And just watching this morning um, and, and watching um, the, the Scorches bat, uh, Livingston just teeing off, hitting it from a strong position. But then, um, I can't think who else was, was back at the time, but when he tried to hit it, it was losing shape. So it wasn't getting as good a carry on that ball. So it just shows even the best when they try and overhit it and lose that basic shape, can't hit it anywhere. And these are the important bits that we're really working on now. Okay, so you watched the T20 this morning. As a purist, I was watching the um, South Africa versus Pakistan test match. Did you see any well, of that? Well, I had that on one telly and the other one on the other telly. Uh, good answer, good answer. So, um, yeah, you badger. Um, so, Eddie, um, your, your son as well, um, Liam, has, has been doing the drills. He has. He's been having a go. Yeah, he's, um, it's his sort of um, second year, really, at looking at skills of cricket. Um, he's enjoying it. Um, it's part of his sort of homeschooling, bit of PE, throw it into that, into that mix, really, of uh, movement, competency, etc. Um, and yeah, he's, he's, he's starting at a level. The, the, the thing is, with, with the, the drills that Brownie put through, there's certain stages. Um, Liam's not quite at the stage where he's going to be um, executing the shots off, off one leg holds at the moment, but he'll, 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 he'll move towards there. He'll move towards that. Brownie, you look like... <laughs> You look like something out of the Bible at the moment. That's <laughs> unbelievable. The blinds down as well, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good, isn't it? I'm going to have to change around here. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, with, without further ado, let, yeah. let's have a look at some of the videos we've had in. And uh, it's worth saying that we've set up this Facebook group, a private Facebook group for the, uh, the lockdown club. Um, if you are on Facebook, please join it because we're sharing lots on there. But I will also send out another email to those who, who don't use Facebook and make sure they've got like, you know, the brownie stuff and, and some of these um, videos that are being sent in to us as well. So um, let's, um, let's have a look at some of the feedback we've had. Okay, so it is, is that video um, of you, Brownie, just um, showing what we've... It just shows the simplicity, doesn't it, of how you can do things inside. Look at the equipment you've got there, Brownie, as well. Well, obviously, I mean, Blathers' office is a little bit, you know, there's not a lot in it. So we've got to use bits that we can find, you know, just lying around, you know. So uh, it just shows just any, any object which you can use as a, you know, as a target to go towards, hold that position, holding that for me, that right side in. But look at my bat. Look, it's not, it's not dropping. Nothing's dropping. It's staying locked in. So then, because all we're looking at is that movement, that getting into that strong position. There we go. Look, you I, had a little look. wobble there, actually. Yeah, it's 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 me uh, Cuban heel boots, mate. It's nothing to do with me. Uh, <laughs> There's a good one. There's a good one. And again, so what you were talking about about not getting that um, that shoulder too far around, not opening up, keeping keeping your back path clear, whichever angle you're going at. Mm, exactly. Look at that there. Obviously, that's going across the sort of off drive towards cover drive. Look at my right, my right side and my bat is all aligned, hips and shoulders to go through the target area there, which is, which is what we're after. I mean, these are the little bits, because I said, we want to be precise. So if I let my hands go from there, they'll go in a straight line through the ball. So we're presenting that full face, which is, is critical for all these straight bat shots. Okay. Um, let, let's have a look at some of the um, videos we've had. Um, this is a, um, a, a guy called Mikey Robinson. Um, and he, he was doing your step over drill. So um, we'll just have a look at that. Just say stop if you want me to, Brownie, but... We'll just go through it first, just, just, to, just to show. Yeah, I mean, you look at that there and, you know, Mikey's got it, got it waxed really, you know, he's pretty good. You know, he has done these drills with me before, so he's got a head start, but, um, you know, he is, you know, somebody who has worked quite a lot on technique 
um, and maintaining that shape. You know, if anything, you can say, can that right side just stay in that little bit longer? You know, can he just really focus on that right shoulder staying in, not letting that back tail just sort of arc out a little bit, you know, towards sort of first, second slip. But, uh, you know, that's pretty good movement for me. Really good. Good. And um, here he is um, hitting some balls off a tee as well. Yeah, lovely and straight. Lovely and straight. The one comment I would say, you know, and I, and I, and I do with a lot of my batters, when we're just doing these drills, you know, I'd just like him to hold that position and that bat face up there and hold it for a couple of seconds. So okay. you get a lot of feedback. You can feel yourself. You're not, you know, you, you cut it short and then I've, I've lost a little balance where if I keep, hold that shape, one, two, and then back down, which is also a magnificent training tool when you are working with young players and you are just doing sort of bubble feeds or slow machines where they're working at the straight drive is get them to count to three after the shot and maintain that position. And the difference in when they do that and when they don't do that is marked because all of a sudden they know they've got to hold that position. So everything's got to be in line, whereas they hit it and then they just move out of the way and you lose a lot of feedback from that. Whereas if you've actually got to go one, two, three, all of a sudden the focus is really on maintaining that position. That works a real treat. So as and when we get down the line and you do go to your nets, maybe try that little thing of just holding it for two or three seconds, or even in the park when you're hitting them with your dad or your mum or your sister, you know, just see if you can hold that shape when you're just driving that ball down the ground. Um, so moving on, Eddie, uh, your son, Liam, um, he tried the resistance with the football on the drives. Yeah, he did. Just, he... just looking at that at the start, the, the, the pickup position is, is great. Um, well, yeah, won't let Dad comment on his own son, Brownie. So, any, any feedback on, on young Liam? Only nine years old. Well, he'll be batting 10 places higher than his dad. I can see that anyway, you know. But, uh, you know, he's getting his hands back nicely, nice and high, unweighting the bat. And then the follow through, and you look at those high hands and that bat face throw up going through the ball and maintaining that figure nine. You look at that, it's something that people talk about, really Australian sort of terminology, but the figure nine, so the bat actually makes the stick of the nine and then your arms make the, make the naught of the nine. And that's, that's something that you're really looking for as a coach. So you're maintaining that, that strong structure through the ball. You're not allowing those arms. If I come side on, ugh, trap for space so you're maintaining that shape through the ball you're not allowing that to do that yeah arms to do that and that's really good spot on that Look, looks really good the way he's transferring the weight and everything brilliant mm. and he did a bit of catching as well against the bin yeah he did this before he did the batting actually just to get himself moving get his yeah. hands and his eyes um going really bit of hand-eye coordination um just while I was getting the mat out of the house, really. <laughs> so I gave him something to do while I went to find a football for him to hit um, before he did his batting. So, yeah, ever so simple. And, and, and again, we talk about frequency and volume. Within three minutes, he probably tried, I mean, not, not all, let's say, complete, but he'd, he'd, he'd had 50 catches. Yeah. Uh, and it's just about raising that volume and frequency of, uh, of you know, the repetition of, of the skills we're looking for people to do. It just shows how easy it is, really. Let's have a look at um, a post by um, Sarah Sutherland, who, who posted her son Jack practicing on the backyard. Quite a setup they've got there, actually. Mm. Um, and you commented on this, Brownie. You, you, you made a comment in the group. Yeah. I mean, this is what we want. You know, if people are going to send videos in, you know, I just want you know, videos sent in and then yeah. the people that send them in don't get anything back. You know, if we get three million videos, it might be a bit tough. It might be a long week. But... Um, just helping these youngsters. And if you can just hold it there, brothers. Right, so the first thing you look at, you know, even when he's not, even before he's hit the ball here, you know, you look at his feet, you know, and just a little bit closed. His left foot, yeah. slightly in front of his right. So basically his shoulder is now probably pointing more towards mid off rather than where the ball's coming from. Probably exaggerating a little bit. It's probably not quite that. So that, that left shoulder's pointing this way. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that back foot's probably pointing slightly gully. Mm. Whereas if you brought that round, open that front up a bit, it would bring that shoulder round straighter. Correct. And that would allow him a, 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 a straight line through at the target because this is, this is where the ball's coming from, is obviously from the bowler. So that's what you want, that perfect 
that um, uh, sort of track through at the ball. Okay. He's got one of the best coaching aids on you could ever ask for, lines on his trousers and lines on his, on his top. <laughs> Absolutely. So helpful. They're mm -hmm. so helpful. I think to, to emphasise what Brown is talking about, it will, help, it will help the player go from what we're called a blocked off sort of more one-eyed stance to actually just opening up that fraction and we get more of a two-eyed stance. So it helps access the ball in, in, with forward or, or movements backwards as well. It's a very small adjustment, isn't mm. it? It's a really small adjustment. And, uh, and you've got lots of visual aids around you to help. Even the edge of the matting look, you can see that that would be a straight line. So actually are our heels level or is one slightly overtaking the other? Um, so there's lots of information around before you've even hit the ball that can help. So, Jack, um, I hope that helps. Uh, work on that again. Follow what Eddie and Brownie's just told you and um, send, us a, send us a video in next week and let's see how that's um, helped you if we, if we can. So I think really looking at those videos, it, it, it kind of uh, epitomises what the lockdown club's about, really. We're showing activity at different levels, using different equipment, minimal equipment in, in smallish spaces, really. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what it's all designed for. So hopefully people will continue to send in the videos. We can try and go through as many as we can. We'll probably have a little section each week where we try and get through as many as we can to give some feedback. We'll, we'll write feedback on Facebook as well as much as we can. But ultimately, what you're doing is you're providing yourselves, those players that, that, that record, they're providing themselves with feedback to look at. Yeah. And then if they just, just they, they put that back against some of the coaching points that all the coaches in the lockdown club provide, they can start to do their own, for want of a better word, analysis, really. Um, then it's, not, it's not huge. It's not too hard. You're just looking at, against things, the, the points that we, we show you or tell you and against what you look like. So you can start to, to create a feel. You start to see what things feel like. And hopefully the more you do it as a player, the easier it gets to reflect. And that's what we want to do. We want to encourage you players to self-reflect. So we, we've, had, we've had lots of um, a, a younger lockdown club members send stuff in. Thank you. Keep it coming. Uh, but nice to get um, some of the older members. And we have, we've got a lot. There's over 700 people between 20 and 35 who are obviously, you know, good club cricketers, um, but they're obviously shy. So uh, send your stuff in. You know, we, we, we can all learn um, from, from, from sharing this stuff. It's, it's a... It's a club. We want to help each other. And it's the same with what you're talking about. I mean, you two, I mean, your experience around coaching. Um, we're going to do a couple of webinars um, later in the programme for club coaches. So if we can help you in any way, um, in, in, in your coaching structure, your club structure, the way you approach things, um, that, that's something we're going to share, Eddie, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And we can look at all angles and we'll be, we'll be, it, there'll be a mixture. We'll want to share some things that we think is good and best practice for coaches, but also we want coaches to, to contact us to say um, what they want. Yeah. Um, so we can service their, their need really. And it can be needs led. At the end of the day with my senior players, um, you know, we've, we've got a competitive environment. We've probably got 16 people in our, our first team squad all vying for a place on, on a Saturday um, and ultimately, as a coach, you've, you've got to use um, different things um, to try and make that selection, whether, whether that be statistics, whether that be um, uh, performances in the past and just knowing that they're a good player and they come up with the, the goods when they, because some players don't train well but perform brilliantly and, 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 and vice versa. Um, but we were talking earlier, Eddie, about um, statistics um, and, and, you know, not really... In, in, in a junior environment and um, taking that too seriously because it's not the be all and end all and there are a lot of things which make um, a, a difference. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. It can be an indicator of performance, can't it? It can give us some feedback. Um, and yes, these things can go into selection. Um, but I think one of the sort of red flags for coaches and parents out there would be to think about what we call relative age effect and how maturation can take a big part of um, performance and development. So an example of it would be an early developer, um, so a boy or girl who's physically bigger, let's say with the bat, 
may be able to score more runs quicker, hit the ball harder, etc. But actually the way they're doing it and the technique they're using may not hold up for a longer period of time. So it may be effective for a short period and they may be able to, in, in essence, bully a game. Um, but that may just have a, a, a short-term success. And actually people who have more technical ability, um, even if left, lesser stature and power, can, can come through. Yorkshire were fantastic at managing Joe Root. Joe Root couldn't hit the ball off the square as a youngster. I remember. But, but, but Kevin Sharp and, and the guys at Yorkshire, they stayed with him, stayed with him, stayed with him until he grew a little bit bigger. Then his strength and conditioning programme came around him as well. And then because he was so technically great as a player, they gave him time to mature and go through. Now, there are different elements of the game where we, we, we look to use power plays, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like what Brandy said earlier. People can clear the rope in, in, in the modern um, formats of the game because their technique is so good and their balance uh, and, and the way they can uh, execute the shots is all good because those basics are sound. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Brownie, you must have seen lots of players who have sort of defied the odds or you've seen them a year later and gone, crikey. Um, you know, it's a, it's a journey. As, as, as Eddie, Eddie uses that term a lot, a player's journey. It is, and you you know you look at, at young players at ten and eleven that come to you for the first time for a one to one or come and join your club or and you look at them and go, this lad's going to be a good creator, you know, because he's got those tech, the, the technical aspects right. And then it's a case of just being patient with that individual, you know, take into account, you know, he might he might only get um, fifteen in twenty overs, and everybody will be moaning, but you know deep down as a coach. Well, this lad will still be doing it in 15, 20 years' time because he's technically good. Yeah. Whereas the other guys that maybe at that age group, which can frustrate the other player because he thinks, well, I'm doing this right and feel as I'm doing it right, but I'm not getting the rewards. Mm. You know, and they will catch up and they will go past because as they get stronger, you know, I've got a young player that comes to B3 um, on a Friday for one to ones. And, you know, for two and three years, I've been saying to him, you'll catch up, you'll catch up. And this winter, all of a sudden, he started to be hitting the back net really firmly, you know, and you can see it happening. And for me as a coach, to see the look on the lad's face when all of a sudden he knows, yeah. actually, it is coming. And that's he's been patient. Cool. And, he's made, and that's, that's credit to him. Absolutely. Yeah. If I may, that's, that's an absolute key message to players, coaches, parents, stakeholders, teachers, people that are involved in working with youngsters. To talent development, you need to have a long-term approach to it. Okay. You need to think about where that player, we're talking starting with juniors here, where they're going to be. It's not all about today. It's where the tomorrows are going to be. Yeah. Um, and uh, parents will know this. They only have to look at the children's clothes. One minute they're in them, next minute these shoes don't fit, that don't fit. And so if, if the way they grow as individuals physically and mentally well, think what, how they grow as cricketers as well. It's, it's massive and it's such a fascinating topic. Okay, well, uh, for anybody who's interested, we, we are going to be having some, some masterclasses, Zoom sessions. Um, I spoke to Chris Reid this morning. He's, he's in India with the England side doing the, the wicket-keeping coach job. Um, and, and he's agreed after the first test to do something with us. So any wicket-keepers out there... Um, we're going to be doing a survey of the members over the next week or so. Let us know if you want to be part of, of that and other stuff that we're doing. Um, Ed, Eddie and Brownie are going to do some sort of um, coach the coach and, 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 and specialist player development stuff like the, the mental side of the game. Um, Eddie, I think you're going to do a, um, a parent education or guidance session. because yes. that's, that's... Yeah, definitely. So um, I've got lots of uh, information to share. Um, about working with um, young people, um, about adolescent development. So uh, really to all coaches and parents out there, um, fire in some questions or you want answering. I mean, I've got, I've got a toolbox of stuff which I want to share with you, but I also want to kind of know what you want to know uh, and see if I can facilitate that for you. So um, there's lots of ways we can do it. We can package it up and just share it, or we can deliver it and have interactive sessions like this on, you know, uh, via, via Zoom calls. So please just get in touch and let us know um, any queries, questions, concerns that you may have, um, because ultimately we want the same, the same thing. You want to help your son or daughter, uh, and we want to be able to help you do that. 
Um, so please get in touch with all your, all your questions. Fantastic. Good. Uh, and Brownie, uh, moving on, um, this week's um, um, plan, uh, we, we, we've, we've moved on to some basic bowling drills. Some of the stuff you did with um, Oscar um, was stuff he's also done with, with Steve Kirby, um, our, our, our pace bowling specialist. Um, and, and we did some drills around getting spin bowlers going as well, Eddie. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Um, so th there's, there's, you know, there's resource there for all types of bowlers. Um, the video footage in the, in the club backs it up. And again, it just goes to show the simplicity of what you can do at home in a confined space, wherever you are. Um, there's things that you can be doing. Okay, there's things that you can be doing and our job is to make it relatively simple for you to, to understand, but it's down to you. It's down to you to get that volume of practice in and it's up to you the frequency of how many times a week you want to do that. Brownie, it, the pace bowling stuff that, that Oscar did with you up against the wall, just, just great stuff really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, for the spin and the pace, you, you know, the video showed that, you know, I think we probably had about five metres to work in, you know, if that, you know, because we did shorten it just to show that we could you could do it in that space available. And it's just, you know, it's just getting through your action, but, um, but making sure that you're ticking all those boxes, you know, the strong, the strong position, um, and, but more importantly, actually bowling the ball, not just pushing it up against the wall or just rolling it out your fingers, actually finish that action. I think that would be the big key for anybody who's going to do these drills is actually bowl the thing. Don't just push it out thinking, well, it's only a wall five meters away. Well, bowl it, let it go, you know, really follow through and draw, you know, pull through at your target and really enhance, you know, that flow and that straight line through at the target as well. You know, that's, that's the key is really finish that action. Um, so I, I reckon, um, guys, that the, the stuff we've got in the first two weeks, even if people just did that, um, they're going to be well set, re ready for when nets open up or the season starts. Uh, but just progressing on to weeks three, four and, and, and ahead, um, what we got planned, Brownie? Uh, well, probably looking at week three, we're going to start looking at back foot. You know, I like to sort of isolate it a little bit early on where we do all the straight back shots. So we've done that. We'll have done the front foot um, by the end of this week. Um, and still, but still carry on revisiting that. There's no reason why we can't. But then the back foot shots, uh, back foot defense, back foot punch, work off your hip that sort of thing. And then um, then bring in probably Paul Johnson to do um, some talk about spin. A fantastic player of spin. Obviously with Knotts, 20 years. Is he still the youngest player to play for Knotts? But a heck so, of a yeah. player and always a difficult, punchy little character when he played. So uh, looking forward to seeing those uh, those comments from, from Jono in the next week. Okay. And from you, Eddie? Yeah, we'll start to develop fielding a lot more show people what they can do uh, in and around their, you know, their environment, whether it be around the house, uh, in the house, outside the house, at the park, um, looking at a lot more catching um, and throwing as well. Um, we'll, we'll look at you working in straight lines, but also we'll try and bring in angles because ultimately it's very rare the ball comes to you on a straight line. Um, so we'll try and make it as realistic as we can, but given the, the situation people are in in the environment, um, we're going to do the best we can, but show you what you can do rather than what you can't do. Okay, fantastic. Um, thanks, guys. Um, been brilliant. Uh, very appreciative of your, your time. Um, and, and I'm sure that the people in this group are, uh, are very appreciative as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Just one thing, brothers, before you go, I mean, obviously, I've had a little bit of an insight onto some of the videos that are coming up. You know, obviously, we've shot a few and then we've dipped into the, the vault with a couple of others. But the, for you keepers out there, the Chris Reed ones are absolutely fantastic. I'm putting you know, them in this week. Yeah, absolutely superb. Just what you can do in your garden. Obviously, he did this in his garden and then went off to India. So, but for you guys out there, whether you're playing Premier League cricket, whether you're a junior just starting, just look how simple the messages are from Reedy. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, no, they are superb. Okay. Cheers, Brownie. Cheers, mate. Eddie. Cheers, brothers. Cheers, Brownie. Oh, mate. All the best. Cheers. It's all come together quite well. Week two, Eddie. Pleased? Very pleased. You know, it's um, there's a there's a real wide uh, and varied amount of content that we're putting together for the for the lockdown club. Um, hopefully, it gives people a bit of a flavour as to to not only what we've got now, but where we can go with certain topics. Um, and yeah, it should prove to be a good few weeks to come. Brilliant. And um, I think you could. 
um, say that there's almost enough in those first two weeks to repeat, but uh, we're going to keep adding. Um, the, the masterclasses and the Zooms, I mean, Reedy, Suchi, mm. uh, Jono, uh, Curbs, it's going to be great. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of expertise that we're looking, you know, very lucky to have on board. Uh, and the fact that these guys are going to share it through the, through the lockdown club, it's going to be um, uh, exciting, really, for people to, to hook into. Yeah, looking forward to it. Good. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for listening. It, it's dragged on. I mean, it's amazing. Once you get going and chatting, um, the, 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 this, this thing just um, evolves. So um, thanks for listening to us. Um, we hope that uh, we've helped you, inspired you, gave you a couple of ideas, whatever you take away from it. Um, as long as it's positive, that's all that matters. Um, have a great week and um, see you all in week three. Eddie, yes. thanks a lot, mate. Pleasure. Have see a great everyone. weekend. Yeah, you too. See everyone in week three. Um, homeschooling. Carry on. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. <laughs>